No, I have decided to skip college and take my talent to the NBA. With the 13th pick, Kobe Bryant. Greatness lies ahead for this young man. Michael Jordan will tell you that Kobe Bryant, the future of the NBA. Is there anything he can't do anywhere on the floor? Yeah. Yeah. For the Lakers, who finish with a 15-1 run. The best all-time playoff winning percentage. The Lakers have won back-to-back -back NBA championships. Bryant for three. Go! Oh! oh! And one of the great farewell performances in any sport at any time. Over his career, Kobe averaged 25 points per game, 4.7 assists per game, and 5.2 rebounds per game, off 44.7% from the floor and 329 from three. For his career, he is third all-time in points scored, third in free throws made, 30th all-time in assists, and fourth in usage percentage, meaning he used 31.8% of all of his team's possessions while he was on the court. The only players with a higher percentage were Michael Jordan at number one with 33%, Russell Westbrook at 32%, and Demarcus Cousins at 31.98. That just shows how ball dominant he could be, and the next few sections we'll see a bit of why and how that worked. Style of play. Kobe is the ultimate ISO player. The era he played in was completely different style than it is today, and this fit Kobe perfectly. One of the hardest working players ever, Kobe worked non-stop on developing the moves that would make him nearly impossible to defend. He was a singularly focused player, and this led to the term Mamba mentality. If you look closely, you can see quite the similarity between him and another all-time great. This chart shows his shot selection throughout his entire career. His favorite spots being the wings, high post, and short corner. This is typical for ISO players as that gives them better space and a better view of the floor. Phil Jackson's triangle offense was tailor-made to get the best player isolated on one side of the floor while keeping consistent ball movement or player movement. This is why it works so well for players like Kobe and for Michael Jordan. setup. Kobe was always a threat to drive and score. When he drove, he would do whatever it took to get to the rim or to get fouled. His moves to finish at the rim were often creative and emphatic. Without his ability to get to the hoop, the rest of his moves become more difficult as we saw late in his career. One important aspect of driving the basketball is sealing your defender. Once Kobe has a step on his man, he seals him off with his shoulders and feet. He's actively attacking his defender's foot. This makes it much harder to recover as a defender, and this means that that player is now out of the play. Kobe's focus now shifts to the next line of defense. The center usually is the one to rotate over. If the big rotates late, that signals Kobe to attack the front of the rim. If the big is there, he might use a reverse layup, or stop and pop, or try and draw the foul. Face-up series. Jab Step Jumper This is a move he did on almost every play and he used it to lead into his other moves. For this move, he catches the ball in his sweet spot, the mid post or the short wing. He's perfectly comfortable here. He knows he can beat his defender however he wants, so his main concern is cushion and help. He's always in triple threat position. This means he can drive, shoot, or pass without changing his stance. This is important for any scorer as your view of the floor is vital for your ability to make the right play. If he sees that the help is in good position, he's going to test out his defender. Kobe can see what's happening on the floor, but his defender can't. Kobe then jabs to the baseline, which usually forces the defender to back up just a bit, and that's all the space that Kobe needs. 
dribble pull up at the elbow. The defender just got beat by the jab step a couple of times, so he's going to slide into Kobe's space when he jabs. So Kobe goes on to the next step. One or two very hard dribbles. He wants to get as far as he can in the least amount of time. He controls his balance off of his inside foot and shoots a fadeaway. We'll get into the dynamics of the fadeaway later. The important things here is that he makes space and pulls up on balance. Pump Fake Fadeaway This is the final move in this series and it brings everything together. He uses the triple threat, jabs, dribbles into a pull up, but the defender guesses it's coming so Kobe pump fakes to get his man off balance one way or the other and either pivots into the opening or shoots the gap or draws a foul on the airborne defender. You sell that fake, that jump shot fake, defender raises up just a little bit. And now you can go either right or you can go left. You know, so it's, like, it's almost like, uh, it's like chess kind of. You, each move sets up the next move. Post-up series, turnaround. Kobe played a good bit with his back to the basket. This isn't something you see much today, especially for a guard in our modern ball movement and pick and roll style of offense. But when Kobe wanted a bucket, he would buckle down and get in the post. Since he's not seeing the floor the same as when he's in triple threat position, a lot of what he's doing is based off of feeling. Which side does he feel the defender leaning? Where are their feet? This determines which shoulder Kobe turns over for the simple turnaround. Shoulder shimmy turnaround. Now once again in his chess game, Kobe knows what his defender thinks is coming because he set it up that way. Now he hits them with that shoulder shimmy, maybe shows the ball briefly before turning the other way. Pump fake. When Kobe has an aggressive defender, most times that player really wants to contest his shot or speed him up, but Kobe doesn't let that happen. He shows the ball to either get the defender off his feet or out of position. Rise, hit couple of side notes. So I wanted to show a couple of things that Kobe does that your coach probably taught you in junior high, but most players don't actually use these effectively. When he is in a situation where he doesn't like what he sees or he feels pressured, he's going to take two dribbles backwards and attack again. This allows him a second to reorient himself and to catch the defense off guard. The other is the jump stop. I can't tell you how versatile this move can be. It covers space, it helps gather you for a power finish, it also throws off the timing of the defender. Kobe used it more and more the older he got, and you can see just how effective it is. The most important thing are basic fundamentals. Shooting and footwork. And that's why I can play as well as I'm playing even though I'm like 80 years old. Because of the footwork. Kobe Bryant had some of the best footwork we've ever seen. This didn't come overnight. It comes from practice and repetition. Now let's break down some of his footwork. Reverse pivot. Establishing your pivot foot is just as important as how you use it. When Kobe plants, he's looking at his defender's positioning to determine which foot and where to pivot. Once he establishes that foot, he never picks it up again until he goes into his move, otherwise it's a trap. He keeps his center of gravity low in order to stay on balance and uses his shoulders as a guide to get into scoring position. On the reverse pivot, he uses the inside foot to pivot and the outside foot to quickly turn away from the defender. The reason he does this is because the defender will oftentimes try and play it close to prevent him from stepping through, so he spins away from the contact to get an open look. If you're a younger player, I would work on the up and under move to get a good handle on footwork before you try anything too advanced. The science of it really is just you want to be on balance once you're going up. After that, you know, you might fade, you might do whatever. But going up, you want to be able to have a firm base, and pivoting here with this leg here, and getting a strong base here. Now, once you elevate, now you can fade. This allows him to get to a place where he can square his shoulders to the hoop and not be out of control. After the jump, you see his feet sway forward and his shoulders back. 
This allows them to get into a relaxed position from which to shoot. The fadeaway combines the need for both lower and upper body strength in order to get the ball where it needs to go. So once again, if you're a younger player looking to emulate these moves, work first on moving quickly into a shot and planting off one foot and rising on balance before you throw fading away into the mix. Kobe Bryant will go down as one of the best ever. This is attributed to his work ethic, mental fortitude, unbreakable confidence, and his attention to detail. He won five championships, and when he did retire, he scored 60 in his final game just to show he still could. He may have had issues with teammates over the years because of his overbearing confidence and intensity, but the results are pretty tough to argue with. Kobe was a winner. He repeatedly showed his will to win in clutch situations, and even when he was injured, it didn't stop him from being out there. The NBA is a different place now, but the impact of Kobe Bryant will not soon be forgotten. Post-game interview. Jeez, oh whiz, guys. Come on. Think of a question. Who was better, number eight Kobe or number 24 Kobe? Vote in the poll or comment below to cast your vote. Thank you so much for watching the video. I know it's been forever since I uploaded last and my upload schedule has been pretty rough. Anyways, I appreciate the support in my absence. You guys can look forward to even better content here in the future. Peace.